before I would do um, a, a planting plan, before I would put together uh, um, any kind of planting scheme whatsoever, I would do something called a site survey and a site analysis. And I would be looking at things like drainage, aspect, orientation, boundaries, that kind of thing. So you really are putting together, you're trying to collect a lot of information before you put together your creative scheme. Drainage is a big one and you do really want to consider that, especially if you're on a slope, for example. Um, again, you know, over the winter months as well, you've got to consider your plants quite carefully. pH is another one. You know, you're, you're probably well aware that some plants like acid soil, some like alkaline, some are quite happy to be in anything. Do a wee pH test before you put together your planting scheme. Nutrients, again, is another particularly important thing too. Do you want to create a creative planting plan and then feel that it's high maintenance, heavy feeders, things that need a lot of nutritional input in later years, or do you go for plants that are maybe more hardy but don't really need any input from you after day one apart from minor um, maintenance on an ongoing basis. And really get to know your soil, I mean as gardeners you really do have to know your soil, um, it's vitally important. Aspect, again another key point, I mean how is your, how is your border, how is your planting scheme, where is it going to be? Um, in general, north and east facing are cool, shady sites, and again, you want to think about plants that are going to be good for that particular aspect. South and west facing are your warmest and your sunniest, so you can really maximise plants that enjoy that particular situation. In order to talk about a creative planting scheme, I'm going to talk about the different categories of plants, and I'm sorry if you know this already, I'll try and go over it quite quickly. This is really a palette, if you think about it in a creative way, the plants are really a palette of the things we're going to work with and create a beautiful scheme. So the first thing you really have to consider is, is shrubs, and shrubs are very essential in a planting scheme for height and shape and structure, especially in the winter months when you've got a lot of perennials that might die back and might not have any interest over the winter months. Your shrubs are really doing the hard work they're doing, they're creating that form and structure. Do remember that shrubs can be evergreen and some are deciduous as well, so again, you've got to keep weigh up these kind of key points. Do you need something that looks good if over the winter you might want to go for evergreen as opposed to deciduous? Um, most shrubs flower early, that's nice, you know, that, that can work in your favour in the planting scheme. It can provide a lot of interest um, early on in the year. Um, but the, the downside of a shrub is that they can tend to look a bit dull um, as the year goes on, so you have to complement them with other things, whether it's grasses or, or whether it's perennials. Um, I'm not anti-shrub, but you know they're, they, they can, they're, they're, they're good. At, for me, they, they provide shape and structure, first and foremost. The one plant category that I adore is perennials. Um, Perennials for me just are the, the, the thing that you can really play about with and have lots of creative fun with. The perennial, there's just so many to choose from, they're just wide and varied and they are the, the, the mainstay of the border, they're the thing that create that kind of wow factor in the border. Um, they flower throughout the year, uh, especially the, the climax really late summer and to, to late autumn. The benefit of a perennial is that they're easy, they establish themselves quickly. Shrubs are a wee bit they take a wee bit longer to grow, but a perennial will really establish fairly quickly. Um, and they're also easy to propagate. And that works in your favour if you've got a low budget and you want to do division and you want to extend the, the, the volume of plants that you have. You maybe want to take some out of a particular border and put them somewhere else. Um, perennials are great. I mean, they just provide such a swathe of colour in the diversity of plants within, or the, the diversity of flowers in a planting scheme can be enormous um, through perennials. Um, they balance really well with shrubs and grasses, as I mentioned earlier. Um, and I guess, like when I think about putting together planting plans, I would say probably nine times out of ten, I would have a 60% perennial mix to maybe a 40% either shrub or grass mix. I'll have a few other things in there as well, but probably about 60%. Okay, <clears throat> next category I'm going to look at is ornamental grasses. I really like grasses, I'm a big fan of grasses. Um, they provide such a fantastic um, colourful foliage and structure within a border. The interesting thing about grasses, you know, they move and they, they, they move about, so they're given another dimension to a border. At the Hidden Gardens, we were very fortunate we had a, a raised border and they had lots of grasses in there. And every time I passed by that border, I absolutely adored it because it moved and I got a real sense of movement, sound as well, they create sound too. So they're giving you another dimension into your planting scheme. 
Um, many are evergreen. Again, people think, you know, I need a shrub to give me winter interest. You don't always need a shrub, you can do something with a, an ornamental grass. Um, they give a sense of continuity. <clears throat> By that, I mean they link summer to winter. And that can be, you know, if you take a snapshot of a particular grass over a 12-month period, it could be there in situ, but it will change colour, it will change shape, it will, it will just change, it might pr provide a seed head. It has a real sense of continuity. Um, a lot of the flowers turn into decorative seed heads in the winter. And what I generally do is I leave them over the winter to create structure and also to provide food for the birds as well. If you ever walk into a garden in the winter time and there's been a har or there's been a frost, and if you look at some of those skeleton plants, they just look phenomenal. They're just really, really beautiful. Um, a, a big range of varieties of grasses to choose from as well. Plenty there. The next category is climbers. Um, people often think climbers, you need a wall, and they're great for doing that. They will, um, they will um, clothe backdrop walls and borders and make the garden extend. If you've got a very kind of hard sort of like fence or something, an evergreen climber can soften the look and it can actually make a garden look much bigger. Um, most flower there early summer. Some provide very interesting foliage. Um, over the winter months and can be interesting over a long period of time as well. Um, within the border scenario that we'll be looking at today, you can put things like wigwams in borders or you can put obelisks in there and again you can that can create a bit of architectural interest and structure within the border. Um, you're probably aware of a lot of the, um, the, the climbers that are out there. There's loads to choose from, you know, you've got Lenisera, you've got Jasmine, uh, there's so many, and then you've got the annual, you've got the evergreen sweet peas, you've got annuals like sweet pea annuals, and um, beans and peas can look fantastic. I mix them sometimes within a planting scheme, they can just look amazing. Okay, the other thing, the other plant categories that I want you to look at today are bulbs as well. Remember, bulbs are just not just for spring, you know, there's, there's summer bulbs as well, things like alliums, that kind of thing and autumn bulbs too. So again, bulbs play a very important part within a planting scheme, especially early spring too. I mean, all these lovely snowdrops are, that are out, you know, they just they create that early interest. Annuals, again, can be dotted throughout a planting scheme just to give notes of colour and interest too, but don't rely on annuals too heavily because there's not an awful lot, they have a short period of flowering and it can, you keep, when you don't have your annual in flower you've just got bare space really so they can be nice dotted in a planting scheme. Vegetables are an interesting one, I'm a big fan of vegetables in planting schemes, I do like, this is a nice mix in between the, the, the box hedge and again there's a pattering emerging through the lettuce here. The only problem you have is like when you want to harvest it ruins your planting scheme, you know, and it's like it's half gone. And then, unless you use cut and come again lettuce, something like that would be fine. Um, but they're they're very ornamental. There's beautiful charts out there and just beautiful veg that just look amazing. I'm going to look at um, the one season border. Um, the one season border, when I refer to a one season border, if you go into like big country gardens, you'll find that these are very common and they were very common in days of fjord and gone by and they would be kind of like, I guess, I guess G uh, Gertrude uh, Gico and a lot of these designers were interested in these beautiful one season borders. They are spectacular, if you've got the space they are absolutely spectacular for a couple of months, but it's what do you do with them for the rest of the months, you know, it can just look like empty space. Um, they're a great opportunity for saturated colour. If you just want to go for colour in a big way, they are fantastic. Um, the other thing you've got to remember is that they're very, very high maintenance. Um, think of all the staking involved in all of this herbaceous, all the ground preparation, all the maintenance, all the cutting back. I mean, they are hard work. They're really hard work, but if you've got the time and the effort, there's nothing to stop you from, from uh, using them. Um, they look particularly nice, again, in that kind of country house, stately home situation. If you've got a big garden, they can look fantastic too. Um, they look nice set against maybe an evergreen wall or um, a hedge or something, something in the foreground too. What I like about this particular border is it's not in the regimented rows that I talked about earlier. It's not tall plants at the back, medium in the middle and small at the front. It's very kind of, it's quite well mixed. Um, it's fairly well mixed there. 
if you want to create a creative planting scheme or if you want to come up with some good ideas in terms of creative planting, I would definitely go for the all-season border. I think that's your, 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 the right note to take. Um, it always looks good and um, it's excellent in a high-profile um, position. The downside about the all-season border is it may never look spectacular, but as people who are designing borders, it often can. And that is a challenge within trying to provide an, an all-season border. Um, the way I always think about it in my head is I always think, you know, on a month-to-month -month basis, what's going to flower this month? Or what's going to look good this month? What particular foliage is going to come into season? So I'm really thinking on a month-to-month -month basis. Um, if you go for some herbaceous that have a long flowering season, you're really extending that chance to have something flowering or some notes of interest um, from month to month. I always think about flowering plants next to foliage plants as well. I always try and imagine what does a flower look like next to a particular shape of leaf, how the colour is going to work, the colour of the green as well next to the colour of the flower. There's a whole kind of a whole lot of things you really have to consider but um, it is a bit of a challenge, but if you think along the lines of month to month, I want interest on a month to month basis, I don't think you'll go far wrong. Um, you can introduce a lot of evergreens or grasses to give that year round structure, which is vital to, to have a nice, interesting, creative planting scheme. This particular border is a border that I designed a long time ago in the Hidden Gardens, and it's got a lot of grasses in there. We've got some alliums in there too. I think I've got another slide that shows it in a wee bit more detail. Um, what we've got here is we've got Persicaria, we've got some Cerisium, some Alliums, probably about three or four varieties of grasses in there, sort of um, mixed up throughout, you know, they've got, again, they're interlocking the grasses, they're not in regimented rows. I've got smaller grasses at the front here, this is a Chorus licorice, which if you touch it, it's got a lovely licorice um, scent. So again, have an interest at the front, but keeping a common theme going across there. Some of the flower heads are kind of, um, there's, there's unity in terms of the, the shape of the flower head. I've got Persicaria here and I've also got Sanguisorba, which is a little, same sort of shape. Someone once told me that the foggies were toilet brushes, <laughs> which I think they kind of are in a way. <laughs> um, and I've never kind of forgotten that. No. But there's, there's, and there's alliums dotted through there too. Um, this is a naturalistic planting scheme. It looks very informal. Um, I'm not trying to copy nature, I wouldn't even dare to try and do that, but I'm trying to, look, to make it look very naturalistic. When that border came out, I put another planting scheme in there. Scottish Valley came to the complex at the Hidden Gardens and um, we were fortunate enough for them to give us some funding to create a border, a design for their arrival at Tramway, so it was lovely to be involved in that piece of work. The challenge was it was a winter border and I had to think of something, what's going to look good in the winter time, scratch my head. Um, and Scottish Ballet were also celebrating their ruby anniversary. So I used the colour, I thought the colour theme might be quite nice to link that. That was a kind of style that I wanted to create. Um, this is a, a, a picture of the border, I can talk about it in a wee bit more detail. What we've got here is the ballet border in spring. I've tried to put together a collage of some of the, the, the plants that I have in that scheme within spring. The predominant plant in springtime I have is hellebores within that space and there's a whole row of hellebores which you can't really see at the moment in this particular photograph. Hellebores provide a lot of spring interest. And then towards late spring, early summer, I've got two varieties of tulips in there. I've got dance line to link in with the ballet idea and elegant lady. And again, trying to tie in sort of subtle colours there as well to keep it quite um, calm and soft. I've got dicentra too, which is a lovely little plant that performs really well and again that will flower for a long period of time and you can see in the spring border again not a great photograph but the green the green's really coming into its own there I, I, I love green in springtime and early summer it's just got that vibrant vibrancy of color it's fresh and it's just dynamic towards the summer uh, when the summer begins to end it's almost like the sun soaks out the color of a border you know it becomes it just has it's lost that vibrancy after a period of time Jane, I was there about a month ago for Where a you? training session uh -huh. and it was looking lovely with oh, the dogwoods in there yes, as well. Uh -huh. and, um, the dogwoods to show you. <laughs> witch hazels, yes, red yes. ones and yellow ones yeah. and yeah. the, the hellebores. Yeah. 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 
so this is a summer border. Not much has changed really. A lot of the the, the, um, the, the plants have kind of survived there late spring and they're now into the summer mode. I've got a few peonies in there too. Um, and again, it performs really well over the summer too, but it was a winter border. So again, my challenge was to have interest over late summer. Um, it seems a bit strange because there's so many perennials that do that naturally for you. Um, and this is the autumn border. This is um, the Hamamelis, Amanda, now mm -hmm. taking a really beautiful um, colour, foliage colour here. The colour of leaves in Hamamelis is just wonderful. It's, it's absolutely stunning. From reds to oranges to yellows to, oh, it's just amazing. And the light, it's just it's absolutely fantastic. I've got some skimmia that you should have been in there, the other um, image. You can now begin to see um, the flower heads of the skimmia turn into the berries. And um, again, cornice, the cornice here, ele elegantissima, um, the red flowering cornice, or the, leg, the red stoke cornice. Um, the valley border in winter, Hamamelis, witch mm -hmm. hazel, beautiful plant, amazing plant. Again, a performer over the winter period, not so great in summer, autumn good too. Um, and we stuck in some new lights the first year round just to get a little bit of zing. Again, just thinking about aesthetics in a creative planting scheme, um, a sense of place. Have you heard of that terminology? Does, does everyone know what that means? Can anyone describe that to me? What does that mean? Mm. The local environment, mm. the cottage garden in the countryside, right. and not the other way around. Yeah, you know, yeah. Like, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a good expo explanation. A sense of place is looking at what's around and almost like borrowing the landscape is another term that you might have heard and it's putting a context to your planting scheme. And I mean, in the country, I mean, this is a photograph of Capability Brown, um, can't remember which is um, Chatsworth House. This is a design space. I mean, anyone would look at that photograph and think that's natural, but someone actually designed that. And that's in a country rural location. Um, and again, you know, it's, it's almost like borrowing. In an, an urban environment, it's good to look at architecture and maybe materials, for example. In the Hidden Gardens, we have quite a lot of corten and metal and that kind of like industrial feel to it. And again, we use materials like that to, to, to work with our plants. Um, again, the country, naturalistic, the cottagey, cottagey style planting, that kind of thing. I've also showed and um, put here, this is a contemporary planting scheme. Some people might call that minimalistic. Um, this is a prairie or a naturalistic planting scheme. And this is a gravel garden, um, Beth Chateau kind of scheme. Um, so there's lots of styles and themes out there, but don't get too caught up in that. Rules are there to be broken. If you live in a cottage, it doesn't mean to say you have to have a cottage garden. Okay, <clears throat> the aesthetics. I want to just talk a wee bit about um, height and shape. What I've done here is I talked about the regimented rows in that um, old one season border. I'm not interested in that anymore. We want to interlock plant we want to interlock plants, we want to informally group plants, and providing the eye with a bit of difference in terms of structure and height. Um, we've got vertical interest here from the verbascum and we've also got ground covering plants. Can't really make out what that is. It might be something like a camellia or something there. And that just gives a bit of visual harmony. It gives the eye something to look at that's not dull and boring. Um, structure is another word that you might come across. Structure again, structure and form. Irises and grasses, give, because they have linear leaves, they've got upright form. Um, and they contrast well with a lot of the perennials. They sometimes inject something called architectural shapes. By that, I just mean something that has a bit of, how, how can I describe that? Um, structure and form, I guess, and just a note of interest. The thing to remember about injecting a lot of structure is um, don't overdo it. If you're wanting to have some sort of structure within a space, maybe stick to the one type of plant, but you know, use it more than once within a scheme. Um, don't vary it too much where it can become disorganized. Repetition. By repetition, um, you can repeat plants, or you can you can you can choose from the pl a particular plant family, but select maybe different varieties within that family. That that's a, a really good thing to do. 
and it is that old cliche, less is more, that's, um, and it does provide, it does give a sense of unity and harmony. It's very tempting when you go to a garden centre and you see all these plants, and if you love plants like me, you know, you come home with them and you maybe got one of this and one of that, and you put them all in a planting scheme, you think it just doesn't work. You know, you should have maybe bought five or something and three or something else, and it can actually look much better. Less is more. Repetition, I've got repetition here in this photograph because of the shape. You can see the allium heads are a sphere shape and the box is cut to a sphere as well. So you don't have to just repeat the plants themselves, you can repeat the shape or the form as well and that can give harmony to a border too. Um, <clears throat> fol foliage and texture. Foliage lasts longer than flowers so always think of that, they really have to work hard and they should complement the flowers. Again, just think about how do things balance well together. And the keynote is restrained, you know, if you, if you don't think it works, um, if in doubt, take it out. It's an old cliche, it's, a, it's something I use all the time, if I'm in any doubt, I won't put it in. 